This lecture will cover comparing variables over time and across countries. Comparisons work better when we use a few different devices. The first one is normalization, and that's helpful both for time and for across country comparisons. Real versus nominal measures, um, that's also important. And uh, real measures are helpful for comparisons over time. The third device is using purchasing power parity, and that's helpful for comparisons across countries. That will be covered in the next PowerPoint. So let's define normalization. Normalization means to scale a variable so that you can make better comparisons. And by scaling, we just mean you divide by something sensible, like the population or the size of the economy. It makes a lot of sense in many cases to normalize by the population. If you divide the total GDP of a country by the number of residents, you'll get the GDP per capita. Per capita means by head in Latin. In English, it means per person. Per capita GDP is better than total GDP for comparing the level of economic activity across countries. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, this is 2012 GDP in the United States and China. And so if we look at the first column, GDP in billions of PPP international dollars, which you will know about after you complete the next lecture, um, but that's a very good way to compare. And what we're looking at is um, a 15 trillion 684.8 billion dollar economy in the United States compared to China, the next biggest economy in the world, at 12 trillion 471 billion. So those are pretty close. China's kind of catching up. But are they really? When we look at GDP per capita, that's dividing by the number of people who live in the country, we see that the United States is way ahead of China. In terms of how much we're producing per person, we're like nine times um, more, producing nine times more. Another way to normalize is per unit of GDP. How big is government debt? Is the dollar amount relevant or is size relative to GDP the relevant measure? Well, let's look at an example. Uh, we have the United States and the United Kingdom here. When we look at government spending, you can see that the United States is way outspending the United Kingdom. This was uh, from 2011. But when we look at it as a share of GDP, we can see that the United States government is actually much smaller than the one in the UK. Uh, the deficit tells a similar story. Uh, we're outspending a lot. We, this is $1,401 trillion compared to Great Britain's $187 billion. But as a percent of GDP, that one year of spending, or, or that, that one year deficit was, um, it's still larger, but not by very much. In terms of government debt, uh, this is a stock variable. How much money do we owe right now? And the United States, again, is, is way above where Great Britain is. Um, but as a share of our GDP, we're less than a year of uh, income, and the United Kingdom is at 101% of their income. So usually when we think about that burdens, like a debt burden or a deficit, it makes sense to normalize it relative to the size of the economy. Um, there are other normalizations that you'll you you may come in uh, contact with per relevant population. Um, would you want to compare numbers of children enrolled in secondary education, or the net enrollment rate, which is the number of enrolled children as a percent of the total number of school age children? Um, well, what makes sense? If you want to count the numbers out of school, you could maybe be thinking about, wow, what would it cost to get all these kids in school? You might not want to normalize. You want to, might just look at the total numbers. But if you're interested in the schooling system, like how, how are we serving the kids who need services, then you probably want to normalize by the population of school age kids. So when you go to pick your variables for any project, make sure you really know what they are and think about, wow, do I need to scale these or am I going to be able to compare them the way they are? Next topic, real versus nominal variables. 
Most people value money for what it can buy. You want to have a wad of cash or a bunch of money in the bank so you can buy the things you need and the things you want. The money itself isn't that important. It's what it can buy. Um, that's purchasing power. Nominal means in name. And a nominal measure of money is the dollar amount you have. A real measure of money is the quantity of goods and services the dollar amount can buy. Nominal measures are fine when you are comparing values at one point in time. Nominal values are sometimes labeled current dollars, or often they're just dollars. And that means the dollar amounts reflect prices in the year of interest, in the current year. If you're looking at 2012 GDP, just as we were before, for China and the United States, those were current measures. But if you want to compare real variables over time, you have to use real dollars. Uh, and these will be labeled as constant dollars and sometimes chain dollars. Constant dollar or chain dollar measures control for inflation. And the way they do this is that they're using one set of prices. They're using prices from a base year. And so as the underlying, say, goods and services increase, the dollar amount will increase, not because prices have increased, but because the underlying goods and services have increased. And that's pretty much what I just said. Constant or chain dollar values will be labeled with the reference year. So you'll see 2005 constant US dollars. And that tells you what year the prices are from. By using one set of prices, in this case from 2005, you can tell how real production or real consumption changed. Current dollars are converted to constant dollars using either the current price, or rather the consumer price index or the GDP deflator. The CPI tracks the change in prices for a given basket of consumption goods and services, and the GDP deflator tracks the change in price for a given production of goods and services. So like for a particular GDP uh, real output in one year. And your introductory macroeconomics textbook can provide more information about the details in case you're a little fuzzy because you don't remember. When we're looking at real values, the dollar amounts don't matter. That's why it's okay to use 2005 prices. Again, what we want to know is whether the amount of goods and services produced or consumed has increased or decreased, and the constant prices work great for that. All right, so here's an example. Um, the first series is the United States gross domestic product um, for different years. And so these will be, it doesn't say current, it doesn't say constant. If it doesn't say constant or change, you know that it's current. So the 2008 GDP is the total value of goods and services produced using 2008 prices. All right, so I'm going to read that as 14 trillion 291.5 billion. 2009, there's a recession. In 2009 prices, the economy produced 13 trillion 973.7 billion, so it went down. And then in 2010, in 2010 prices were back up to the dollar amount. We're actually a little above the 2008 number, so it looked like we bounced back and then we continued to grow. However, these numbers confuse both the underlying goods and services produced and the prices. Next series shows us real gross domestic product. Chain dollars, notice it's chain $2,005, so the prices are from 2005. Because the prices are for two from 2005 when the prices were lower, you can see that the 2008 number is now a little bit lower. Hmm, all right. But that's going to be okay because when we go to compare it with 2009, we know we're comparing the underlying goods and services. Okay, recession, that number is lower. And you can see, you can eyeball that as a percent, the decline is larger. So if we're looking at the, the current series, the, uh, the, one point, the, the first table that we're looking at, you can see that things went down by about 300 billion. And in this second series, you can see that the decline is um, a little bit more than that. And because it's in 2005 dollars and the, the, um, the 2008 number is smaller, that's going to be a larger percent. That's going to be a bigger decline. In 2010, when we use the real series, you can see we're not back up to our 2008 goods and services production. 
And that's really what happened. We're not producing as many goods and services. And then you can see that the increases as well are smaller. And so it's the real chain, the real um, series that you want to use. That's what's going to tell you how real GDP changed. Okay, so this just repeats that same idea. The dollar amounts are going to be lower because all prices were lower in 2005. Um, we don't really get an idea of what people had to pay, what prices were like, but that's not what we're interested. We want to know in the real change of goods and services produced, and so that's why we prefer the real series. So what should you use? Anytime you need to compare over time, use the real. For one point in time, nominal is fine. However, if you're collecting data like you will be for this project, and you're going to start by collecting for one year, just in case you might want to add another year later on, it's a good idea to use constant dollar measures. So that's the recommendation. Look for measures that are constant. Next up, comparisons across countries.